I got popular, you know what I mean? Like my group, we formed, the name of the group was Riff, you know? Mr. Clark called us to his office shortly after that and was like, listen, man, they're doing a movie about me. He said, I would like y'all to be in the movie. He wow. said, I want y'all to sing the school song the way y'all sing the school song. He said, and, we, and we're gonna tell y'all story a little bit in the movie. And that's how we got our break, man. The music director, the writer, and the executive producer formed a production company called Fair Shop Production, signed us to it and shopped us a record deal. Wow. So we had a record deal before the movie actually hit. And we actually went to LA before the, the, the movie came out to do our first album with SBK Records, man. And that's how we got our start, man. Okay. So, but then what happened? I mean, you um, sort of, but you, you had a three, two, three of you that, that sang. How did the other two join? Because. All right. So, yeah. that's an excellent question. Excellent question. Well, <laughs> check this out. That didn't take long at all. The first time we sang it, right? Like we, like my cousin Steven, he's like my best friend. He was a barrow, he, he's a baritone singer. And we had a friend, Kenny, that we knew he could he could sing. Yeah. Listen, that after, after that first week of us singing it, yeah, we put Kenny and Buzz into the group. We was like, come on. And we put them in and Steven added the bass and Kenny added that Pray thy name, pray thy name to ever. Yeah, he just added a whole nother thing to it. Okay. And it made it to what the alma mater is today, man. It was awesome, awesome shot. So the, the, there was five of you before the product, before the, the label came around? Yes, definitely. Yeah, okay. five of us a week after we sang it for Mr. Clark, it was five of us. Okay, okay. Singing the song. Okay. <laughs> and did when you went home that night, because I'm, I'm very detailed saying this, did your mom know that you need to learn a song? Did she help out with that? No, no. I went straight to Anthony and Dwayne's house. Okay. See at, see, at that time, I was in high school, right? So my mom kind of like, listen, you got to grow up. You got to, you know, you got to you gotta be a man. You got to go inside here. You got to stay focused. You got to do what you got to do. So she let us go. Yeah. Unless... I was in some trouble and I was never a problem child. Okay. It was more like, go do your thing. If you need me, let me know. My mom worked hard, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. was always yeah. out there working, so. Nah, man, I, I didn't even make it home. Okay. That day, I went straight, after he told me that I was gonna get suspended. Yeah. And repeat the grade over. Yeah. Me and Anthony Dwayne rehearsed for like the good, like I got there about, we got out of school about four. I was there to about 10. Okay. But wh wh why did you decide to change the version? Why not just sing the, the version as it was? Because the version that was there was more like a choir style. It was more like, you know, it was, it was more like um, concert choir. Like I wish I could remember it, man. I'm telling you, I didn't know it. <laughs> But like, it, it was like a concert choir style, you know, like, you know, it, was, it sound like a school song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we got to it, we decided to put that gospel feel to it and doo-wop and it came together, man. It was, it was incredible. It was incredible. And there was no fear that you could, he might not like it and he might just suspend you anyway. Did you think of that? You know what? We didn't think of it at the time. Um, we were scared. I, I was scared out of the pants because, um, see, Anthony Dwayne didn't have nothing to worry about. Yeah, he hadn't pulled him up, yeah. So it was just me trying to impress him. Okay. I didn't know that I was going to impress him okay. that much. I think what really, really got him was after we were done on how the school reacted, reacted. to it. Okay, okay. It was more like the school went bananas. Okay. And he was like, this is the kind of, um, what, did he, what did he call it at the time? School spirit. Okay. That I need. Okay. You know what I mean? Because he was all about education and stuff, but yeah. now we had a version of the school song that everybody loved. 
and he yeah. knew it because he made it a stickler. You better know this. <laughs> so it was more like we change it up now. He changed. He's like, listen, I want everybody to know it yeah. the way they sing it, <laughs> sing it exactly the way they sing it. <laughs> I, I, does the school still sing the song now? Or exactly the way we sing it, man. Wow, my it's goodness. funny because we we went back to shoot a, a music video in the school. 30 years later, okay? Yeah. So it was, it was like a year, couple years, like a year and a half ago. Yeah. We went to the school, we went in the office and there's a big picture of us in the school, like a big picture, like I'm talking about a humongous picture of us in the main office. Joe Clark been retired. Yeah. We're still ringing off in Eastside High School right now. My goodness, We're still ringing off. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny too because their um their school uniforms they they actually have our picture on on their um uniforms. They have they they they, they actually have a picture of the scene that we did in the bathroom. Yeah. on their uniforms. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, get it. I mean, it's not. I mean, uh, I mean, a lot of schools always get, you know, high schools, colleges. They always want to be proud of people who pass through, and that sense of, you know, if they can do it, you can do it. And and I think that's 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 an amazing legacy to have. The question I had oh, is because you mentioned that you guys, you you got signed up. Did you guys have lawyers? Did your parents have to see the contracts, or was it just like? <laughs> Man, I love the way you you ask these questions. Um. <laughs> You know what, man? I'm gonna keep it a hundred thousand degrees with you right now, please. All right, I'm, this is real. Okay. Okay. Our parents, like, we're from the hood. I, I don't know if you know what the hood is. Like, the hood is like ain't nothing good going on in the hood. But cookout, <laughs> <laughs> cookout, you know. Um, um, you see a lot of drug activity being you know, going on in there, man. We we from the hood. So you have to understand, when that was happening, we was making, first of all, I was homeless. I, I, I actually was living with my cousin Steven, because for somehow or another, like, we lost the house that we had. Like, we lost the house. So the whole entire family, because we had a three family home, like first floor, second floor, third floor, basement my uncle stayed in the basement yeah. we lost that house for some reason i don't know why i don't i don't until this day i don't know how okay. but everybody from that house moved in inside my cousin steven's house my aunt della we moved in with them so the wow. whole entire family was living in this big house now you understand my aunt della they were always you know they always had you know, I want to say the uppities, man. They was a part of the uppities, man. They house, they had three car garages. Oh, wow. and like, like it was beautiful. Yeah. So we was living with them. When Lean On Me came about, we was making so much money. Wow. I was able to move my family out and put my immediate family, which is myself, my two sisters and my mother, into another home, like we had, we I, I I was able to put them in a house. Wow! So Amazing. we we was making a lot of money. Then when the record deal came, it that that went well, man, because we were able to record the record and go on tour. So we was making money, man. My parents she didn't have no worries. She didn't care about it. Yeah. Go ahead, you young. <laughs> you gonna do? Yeah, but but give me some of the money when you come back. <laughs> but. <laughs> That's how it is. Yeah, but you know, you, you could. We've, um, you know, I, I lived in the states briefly, and I, and I remember, you know, from TLC to even New Edition, everyone talking about contracts and production deal, and not knowing the the stuff, and not not understanding publishing stuff. So you guys in high school, and they sign you onto a production deal, and I'm wondering, did they say you need legal advice, and let's make sure you understand yeah. what's going on? Oh, so you yeah, guys we... didn't just sign to like a, a like a <laughs> no, we didn't have a fair contract. Like we could have made so much more money if it was fair. Yeah. Um, but 
it was like a, 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 a shot for the guys in the hood, you know what I mean? It was yeah. more like, Yo, this is this is your shot. Go in, do what you gotta do, and then renegotiate and make the contract a little bit better. Okay. So we, we were smart enough to know, or you know, my manager at the time, Skip, was smart enough to know, to let us know that, listen, it's one in a million that this is gonna happen. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, like yeah. You, you got a shot to be in this movie, that's gonna go number one. And now you're getting a record deal. He said, let's get it done and we'll go back in and we will we negotiate. Yes, it was not a fair contract at all. It was a okay contract. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't a um a 360 deal. It wasn't something where we wasn't gonna make no money, but the money yeah. that we could have made, yeah. We wasn't, he wasn't going to get that. Now, I've heard you mention you had a manager, Skip, and I'm still thinking you guys in high school, and you get him. Who, who did, where did the manager pop up from? <laughs> oh, man, I, listen. First of all, how did you pronounce your name? Namdi. Namdi, listen to me, man. You are all right with me, bro. I love this. Listen to me, man. Skip, okay, when we um, did the school song for the first time, yeah. Okay. Um, he found us because okay. he was a social worker at the school. Okay. Now check this out. True story. His son, Darnell Van Rensselaer, is the lead singer of Shy. Oh. Okay. Check it out. Listen, listen. True story. Shy used to rehearse right after we rehearsed inside his house. You understand what I'm saying? So Skip Skip came down after Riff sang and was like, listen, I have some songs. I want you guys to, to, to just come by after school, take a listen to them. He said, I think it will help y'all along the way. So we came in and we met Skip and Skip played us these records, man. And you know, well he actually played them on, on the piano and sang them. And he gave us parts and stuff. We fell in love with Skip. You know okay. what I mean? This is our freshman year. We fell in love with him. <laughs> so we end up making him our manager. Okay. So I just wanted to throw in that shy situation because Darnell Van Rensselaer was a student in Eastside at the oh, time. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. When he graduated, he went to Howard University. Howard, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where Shy was completely formed. But yeah. for the most part, him and Garfield been rocking up at the house when we was young. Okay. We all young, we singing together and stuff like that. Yeah. They had their own group, we had our own group. Okay. So, oh, it's good that you, you, you guys had someone that you could uh, sort of, because uh, as I said, it's, you know, you just don't trust anybody who just puts something in front of you. At least he could, he could read it. He could say, yeah, it's not great, but it's better than nothing and, and guide you along and stuff. And so, Skip was like yeah, a father of us, man. He protected us a lot. Like, even when we were on tour, it was no, like, you know, we did our thing on tour, but it, it was more so where, like, he protected us, man. It was more like, listen, listen, listen. Sing, go straight to the room. Wow. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it wasn't no fooling around like that, man. He was on us, trying to make sure we stayed focused and did everything the right way. Taught us how to be gentlemen. Yeah. It was an awesome, awesome thing, man. He's an awesome guy, man. We were lucky. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. People would have taken advantage of us so bad, man. Yeah. So when, when you guys, okay, you've, you've, you've done the movie, you've got your little deal. As a, as a five some, did you think long term? What were you thinking? What was the sense of where we're going to go? What, how, how are we going to make a move? You know what, man? I'm going to be honest with you. We didn't know. We didn't know, we was, we was kids, we was having fun. We on the road op opening for, like we never did a club date. Okay. You know what I mean? The record company threw us on tour with Vanilla Ice when he came out on the Ice Ice Baby tour. You kidding he me? He was selling out, you know how, he was selling out yeah, he football was, fields. Yeah, yeah, he was the, yeah, he was the biggest <laughs> person in the world. You know what so Riff was opening for that, listening to these to the crowd screaming. It was 
too much for us to handle, man. You know what I mean? It, it was crazy. So, you know what, man? I, you know, we were just living the dream, man. We was, we was just trying to stay focused, live the dream. We wasn't like thinking that that we were even gonna go in and do another album. We was concentrating on that first album. Okay. You know what I mean? We just having fun, man. So at the time, so this was about, was, was this about 89 or 90? What, what, what year was this when you guys were doing the tour? 91. <laughs> okay, 91. So 91. Now, in my head, I'm thinking nowadays they have um, chaperones to go around and start to make sure you keep up with your education. Oh, yeah. No, we Did had we we had graduated. Okay. We understand when we got into um, when we was approached by doing a movie, that was our freshman year. So he talked about doing the movie our freshman year because he had already thrown out the people a year before we came. So Warner Brothers was already on him. Okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? So it was more like, when is the movie going to start? So it happened when we got in 10th grade. You know okay. what I mean? The movie started being recorded. We were still required to go to school, blah, 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 blah. It was still the same. We, we had just recorded the movie when we was in the 10th grade. We was flying out to LA. <laughs> We did some parts out there. It was it was a trip. So by the time we finished, it took about a year to do that. Then we, we went to the eleventh grade. Okay. So uh, right 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 round uh, nineteen ninety, like we was like we had got our first TV show. We no, it was like eighty nine. We yeah. got our first TV show with Regis and Kathy Lee. We did their show. That was our first TV run. And then boom, the album, the move, the movie dropped, and then we dropped the album shortly after that, 1991. The the, uh, the uh, move, the movie had dropped earlier, like I think it was 87, 88, 89, about 89, yeah, 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 yeah. So then, shortly after that, that's when we dropped the CD, man, and we just rode that wave that whole year. That 1991 wow. was a good year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of big bands, and, and then, you know, I'm thinking about, did you guys do any writing, or, or were you, um, did they write all the songs for you, you just sang, or what was the deal back? Yeah, um, Skip Van Rensselaer wrote uh, some songs. We helped do some of the arrangement on his song. You know, okay. did a little harmony part. Um, but Skip Van Rensselaer, our manager, he got four songs on, on the first album. The second album that we did, Riff wrote four songs on that album. Okay, okay. I want to tell you that during the second album, they gave us a budget and was like, okay, because at that time we came out with Joe the and Boys the Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so after. After the Vanilla Ice tour, we went on tour with LL Cool J. Oh, Mama said, knock you out tour. Wow. We did that tour for like six months. So after that, we started doing the club dates with Boys the Men and Jodeci and High Five and okay. Ex-Girlfriend and Color Me Bad. We wow. Doing, we doing all these, these club dates and we're being introduced to other groups. Because you have to understand, we weren't seeing, uh, we weren't seeing black groups on the yeah. Vanilla Ice tour. You yeah. know? 